All right, Rick Perry making his announcement to enter the race, uh, the crowded GOP field, presidency of the United States. Let's get right into it with John Dickerson, moderator of Face the Nation, and Steve Shigaris, senior political editor. They both join us now. Steve, four years ago, Perry's campaign started out strong and basically imploded after more, not more than three weeks. He's asking for a second chance. How will this campaign be different? What'd you hear today? Well, what I saw is that he looked at his weaknesses in, in 2012, mainly uh, that uh, he was unprepared uh, by his own admittance. He was uh, he got his butt kicked in 2012. Uh, he was terrible at fielding uh, attacks from Mitt Romney in 2012. Couldn't shake the tag of being soft on immigration. He really went at all of those things today uh, in his speech, and I think that's what you're going to see moving forward is him really sort of trying to prove to people that all the mistakes that he made in 2012 as a candidate, uh, he's learned from those. So, John, did we see a new and improved Rick Perry, and how long will it take before we really know? Because we've heard that he's been prepping on foreign policy and other such topics for a couple of years now. Yeah, the, the question for Rick Perry, I mean, the case he's making uh, is that he has executive experience and decision-making experience, and that we've seen uh, he's trying to sort of take the senatorial class out of the conversation. And uh, uh, by saying that really giving a good speech, we've learned from this, the current president, uh, is, um, is not enough to prepare you for the job. And he's basically trying to say that he has all those underlying attributes for the job, but the real test for him will be in one of these debates or one of these moments he's asked a question about foreign policy or one of the issues where he says he spent the last three years studying and meeting with people and doing the things necessary uh, to learn about all of them. And the reason that's such a test is that he has that history that Steve talked about. Um, and I think he, with voters, if, if he falls back into that caricature, it'll be impossible to climb back out. Yeah, John, he spent a lot of time politicking in Iowa, but has so far polled low. So how does he plan to set himself apart beyond the, you know, the, the meetings that he's done with uh, people within his, his group and the new glasses and, you know, removing the cowboy boots? How is he going to set himself apart from the pack? Well, you know, the polling right now, stuff's going to change a lot. And so all the spade work he's doing sets him up to take advantage of um, uh, getting better and getting a sense of momentum in the end. The, the rule usually in Iowa is that you organize and spend a lot of time organizing, doing all of that small stuff, and then you hope to get hot at the end. I think that in the winnowing process, the Republicans have to figure out what they want. Um, you know, when he took a shot at uh, sort of the flavor of the day who just gives a good speech on the Senate floor, that's a shot obviously at Senator Rand Paul, but it's also a shot at Marco Rubio, who is doing much better in the polls. Um, and so the winnowing process, he's going to make his case, but he's really going to have to hope that Republicans uh, start to think, well, maybe we do just want a, a governor, and therefore it's a test between the governors who are running, and that immediately winnows the field. Um, his problem and challenge is that, that it looks like there are a lot of Republicans who are looking at a much broader field, and that includes some of those senators who are just more popular right now than he is. Steve, how about the cloud that's basically hanging over Rick Perry? He is facing felony abuse of power charges. How is that likely to affect his campaigning? Well, it's probably one of the reasons why people, well, he hasn't been, uh, I think, um, he hasn't emerged uh, more than he has this year. I think some people must think this could be an issue for him moving forward. It's never a good picture if you have to leave Iowa and New Hampshire and South Carolina to go back to Texas to go to court to answer these charges. Now, he's defended himself saying it's all a witch hunt, um, but at the same time, it's never, it, it's just never a good image. Uh, and so it's something he's going to have to uh, deal with. Yeah, and, and Steve, he's broadening his presidential pitch beyond his state's job success, and he listed a number of things that he would do, as he said, on day one. They range from uh, fixing immigration, uh, from rescinding any agreement with Iran that legitimizes their quest to a nuclear weapon, and holding and naming a foreign leader, naming Vladimir Putin uh, and his energy policy. Uh, so especially now, considering oil prices, how is this all going to play out? 
It'll be interesting to see. I think it's interesting that he laid all that stuff out. Yeah. Again, I think it was an effort uh, for him to show people that he's not the same Rick Perry that ran in 2011 and 2012, that he actually knows his stuff. He went right at Obama and basically mm -hmm. said, you know, the world has descended into a chaos that uh, that the president has created. And, and it's just, I think these are examples. The immigration thing was a big issue for him in 2011. He was tagged as somebody who was soft on immigration, so he laid out his, uh, his experience since then, sending the National Guard to the border, showed people that he's tough on immigration uh, and border security. And so these are all, uh, this is all an effort for him to sort of rebrand himself as I've learned my lesson uh, as a failed candidate in 2011. Please check me out again. John, who do you think his biggest opponent is in this crowded GOP field right now? Well, his first opponent is himself from his previous run. And so once he is able to, if he's able to beat back that uh, caricature of himself, that's the first hurdle he's got to get over. The biggest hurdle among his other candidates, though, is, is probably Governor Walker, Governor Scott Walker. It's any of the other members of the governor class. Uh, there are obviously challenges from Marco Rubio and Ted Cruz. Obviously, Cruz coming from, Cruz has taken a lot of that Texas support that Rick Perry would have liked to have gotten. And, uh, but, but really, the, the reason those governors are his, his biggest threat is that part of his ascension requires people buying the idea that Republicans need to nominate a governor. And so if he can get them to buy that argument, then he's got to clear out the other governors who stand in his way, who are also, also making that same case. So um, he's got a, b a bunch of different competitors, though. And um, he's, got a, he's got a long and patient slog. It's not going to be, if he rises, it's going to be through slow degrees, not through uh, a kind of rocket to the top. Yeah, and Steve, speaking of competitors, a looming threat, CBS News has confirmed that later this month, Jeb Bush will officially announce his campaign on June 15th. He's got a new website advertising that announcement. How do you expect him to shape his campaign? Well, first of all, this is this is a guy who we've pretty much known is running for president. He's been sort of trying to hide that fact, although he's been out there basically as a candidate. We're expecting him to have raised um, north of $100 million for all this. And so he's going to get out there, and he's going to try to play himself uh, as the uh, non-attack dog Republican uh, candidate. You know, he's, he's talked about it before, that this is, you know, this is a, a different kind of politics uh, that he wants to see out there. And so you're going to see him being more of the kinder, maybe gentler, you know, sort of a, a little bit like his brother had said uh, when he ran in 2000, uh, Republican. And so uh, that's how I think he's going to try to separate himself from the other candidates. All right. And John, exciting weekend. Your first show is coming up this weekend on Face the Nation. What do you have planned? What can we expect? Well, we'll talk to uh, Chris Christie up here in uh, New Hampshire. His, uh, talk to him about his possible candidacy, about what it takes to be president. He's another one of those governors who's uh, very big on the executive experience you get from being a governor. And uh, so he's our uh, guest. We're also going to talk to Rick Perry, though, who will uh, be with us from the identical seats I'm in right now. Um, and uh, so we'll get to talk to him about uh, the case he's trying to make. We are very excited. John, we're going to wish you good luck, although we know you're not going to need it. We're looking forward to your very first Face the Nation as moderator. And our thanks, thanks and our thanks to Steve Shigaris, our senior political editor in Washington, for helping us break all of that down. And as we said, you can catch John's first show as moderator of Face the Nation this Sunday at 10.30 a.m. Eastern, only on CBS.